Joining us now, Yossi Abramovitz, an entrepreneur and former candidate for president of Israel, and Huda Ugadum, the co-founder of the association Mamuna, a group that strives to preserve the history of Morocco's Jewish community. Huda, I want to ask you, you know, many are familiar with the great Jewish populations of North Africa, mm -hmm. but tell us how big are the various Jewish communities across Africa? So I wouldn't be able to put a number for everything, but uh, what we have learned from the conference is that there are about 60,000 people right now, um, about 50,000 in South Africa, and there are some, what we will see later on is that there are some emerging um, uh, Jewish tribes that we are still not sure about the genealogy, so maybe Yossi will be able to shed more light. But for Morocco, uh, we used to have a very large community, 120,000. Right now it's 2,500 people left and it's getting even less because some people are leaving and some of them are elderly and dying and we have some villages where we cannot even have the minion. Yossi, uh, historically, what was the Jewish population once like in Africa? Well, um, the, the most famous communities are in North Africa, but then um, Ethiopian Jewry. Uh, I was involved with the rescues going back to 30 years, and uh, there used to be a large community. There's about 9,000 people left that need to be in Israel. We're waiting for the Israeli government to implement the decision. And South Africa and Southern Africa used to have uh, many, and that's been shrinking. But the, the, the interesting story here is the emerging Jewish communities, exactly which there are now tribes that are they're tracing their lineage or, or finding a spiritual home in Judaism and, um, and, and are emerging and connecting with the rest of world Jewry. And uh, they're, they're converting and they're, 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 they're embracing Jewish life in about a dozen different countries. It's really fascinating. Huda, how have these communities survived? There is a very important effort of preservation by the communities themselves, but also by the rest of the communities, which is what Mimuna is doing, at least, for example, in Morocco. We are a group of Muslim students who, back in 2007, decided to start a student club where we wanted to first understand the Jewish heritage, preserve it, and then talk about it to everybody. And uh, as the population is just getting smaller and smaller, Yes, you will have the elders, you will have the rabbis, you will have some of the uh, people who are interested in the topic itself, but it is a duty for everybody in the community to protect that. It's part of your culture. You know, I got to tell you, I saw a clip of one of the films, and, and it, it, there was something very moving about mm -hmm. seeing a tiny congregation in Uganda uh, singing Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, so the, uh, that's the Abu Daya tribe, and uh, they're celebrating their 100th anniversary where they're Chief realized that he, uh, he used to proselytize the Old and New Testament, and he decided he's going with the Old Testament. And um, this is a community now that is has its first uh, potential ole to the state of Israel. Uh, Yosef he's, has his case about to be heard in the high court, um, but it's it is a vibrant, believing community of about a dozen different congregations, uh, about two thousand people. Um, who just love Adonai, celebrate Shabbat, the major holidays. Uh, there's, a, there's an authentic biblical nature uh, of their, their love of God and their, their, their love of, of Judaism. Huda, what challenges, of even threats, do Jewish communities in Africa face now? One of the biggest issues would be just for being forgotten. It's something that is... The one thing that is worse than being hated is actually not existing anymore. Mm. And um, not having somebody to carry on this, not having the freedom to be able to practice is something that you can only feel when, when once you ha it has been taken away from you. So when you're no longer able to speak to your, uh, to your son or your daughter and say a few words in Hebrew, for example, or if you cannot wear a kippah, or if you tell your child to wear a baseball cap or something like that, I think just feeling threatened is something that uh, is the biggest issue right now. So there is a duty to actually make people know that they have to be safe within their communities to practice, to uh, talk about their culture, but also just to be seen in the public eye. Huda Ugadum and Yossi Abramovitz, thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you. We want to also thank the American Sephardi Federation as well as Kulana. We appreciate it. Thank you.